Hi there, welcome back for another lesson. In this lesson, we will talk about the concept of work. So what is work? When we move an object, we need not only to apply a force, but we need to use energy. And that's where the concept of work comes in. It's basically a measure of the energy used to move an object. So work is done when a force is applied on an object and it causes it to move in the same direction as the force. So here we're talking about effective force again. So work is related to effective force, the force that is parallel to the movement. Okay, so we have to transfer energy in order to make the object travel. So work requires energy. Anything that's measured or that is a measurement of energy is measured in joules as usual. So we're, here we have three situations. We have a person lifting a box. So the object is traveling in this direction and the force is also in this direction, right? So the force is applied upwards. We're lifting or the, the person is lifting the box and the box is also traveling upwards. So because the two are in the same direction, this would be an example of work. Now, if a person is just holding the box in place, so the box, there's a force being used, right? Because we have to hold the box. So the force is upwards, but the box is not moving. It's, it's static. So because there's no movement, there's no traveling going on for, for the object, this is not an example of work. We have to have both. We have to have a force applied and we have to have the object traveling in the same direction as the force. So there's no traveling going on, just a force. So this is not an example of work. And here, well, the force applied is upwards to make sure we don't drop the box, but the box is traveling with the person in this direction. So the travel goes this way, but the force is upwards. They are not in the same direction. So this is not an example of work. Again, work implies that the force and the movement of the object have to be, both have to be in the same direction. Okay, so that's the only time the concept of work will apply. So we're talking about effective force and movement in the same direction. So how do we calculate work? So work is a type of energy, so it is measured in joules. Um, this is normally how we express the equation. So work is equal to force, and these for distance, and this little squiggly is for parallel. So the force has to be parallel to the distance covered. So again, if it's parallel to the distance covered, we're really talking about effective force. So I like to write it this way. Work, which is measured in joules, is equal to the effective force, and we know that forces are expressed in newtons, times the distance traveled, and the distance is always expressed in meters. Okay, so we have it here. I retyped it a little bit more neatly, and I have a little example. So if we have a box here, and this box, we calculated the effective force to be five newtons. Well, if the force on the box is, the effective force, I should say, is five newtons, and let's say it traveled for two meters down this slope, down this plane, so we would do five newtons, which is the effective force, times two meters, which is the distance traveled. So this whole movement really involved 10 joules of energy or 10 joules of work, since work is a type of energy. And that's it for the concept of work. It's not any more complicated than that. If you know how to calculate the effective force, you just times that by the distance in meters and voila, you are done. You have the amount of energy called work that was involved in moving the object. So if you have questions, you know what to do. And otherwise, I will see you around for your next lesson. And don't forget, if you have trouble with this or effective force, the next lesson will basically be applying all of these equations on actual practical uh, math problems. So take a look at that. It might be helpful. And until then, take care.